What's the name? Please watch closely. This is a continuation of the part I showed you earlier. It was because it was blocked with, you know, the glove was probably a little bit outside, right? What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll great distances. <laughs> Great distances. <laughs> we can't be sure that item was completely inside locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor is triggered triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted say between the sensor and the door? In inserted? This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. <laughs> Instead of the door closed. But the, but the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene. There just might have been something that fits the description. But sir, by insulator you... God damn it. I think I finally got this figure out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insula insulator that was stuck in locked door? Well, it was this. I found this near the locker, a thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was the was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to it, to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir, it would appear so, sir. Order, order, order. So, are we to believe then that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated the possi that possibility, and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins. Please testify about this. Sir. M me, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? Very well. Begin your testimony. Uh-huh. Mr. Man 2. There's one... Other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used this card. Well, that is true. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. Right. And who is 7777? That is the chief of... Chief of police, right? 
The ID used at 514 is uh, that of the victim. Just before the crime. Hmm. Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases uh, should have been due for transfer. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too. Although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there. And most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let us move on to the cross-examination. Mr. Man 2. There's one more thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. So, unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir. Solid as stone, sir. If my hand wasn't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give the V for victory sign, sir. Couldn't he just use his right hand for that? <laughs> Let's hear him out fully. As we've seen, one newer... As we've seen, one never knows what he might say until the very last second. To enter the evidence room, one must be must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Miss Ryan, what do you think? Oh shit! God damn it! Why didn't I pr press him? Um, I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth uh, to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. Okay, let's do that again. You must use their ID card. Okay, to enter the evidence room you must use their ID card. Is that card hanging from your neck one of these ID cards? Yes sir. This card right next to my cuffs, sir. I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you? Keeping it out in the open like that. Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said that two out of three times my tie gets stuck when I get out of my car? Well, the remaining times it's my ID card that gets stuck. <laughs> so it's every single time you get stuck. Instead of the door closing, wait, wait, what? Maybe I should leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. Ah, goddammit! Well, at the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir. He didn't show me any ID card, sir. Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. M maybe he just panicked? Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Miss Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. Okay, well. Do we have to show some, some kind of evidence now? <laughs> 